live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering .conf 2017. Brought to you by Splunk. Well, welcome back to the uh, Washington Convention Center, the Walter Washington Convention Center in our nation's capital as our coverage continues here of .com 2017. Uh, we're here at Splunk along with Dave Vellante. I'm John Walls and uh, kind of coming down the home stretch. Uh, Dave, and I, I'm, uh, you know, there's, there's just something about the crowds lingering still. Uh, show floor still has that good vibe to it, late second day hasn't let off yet. Well, no, remember the show goes on through tomorrow. Right, right. Uh, some, some event tonight, I think. I don't know, the band's playing. Yeah, right, but... but uh, hanging out, partying tonight. But you can tell the Splunkers are alive and well. Uh, we have Terry Ramos with us, who's going to join us for the next 15 minutes or so, the VP of Business Development at Palo Alto Networks. Terry, good to see you, sir. Good, really appreciate you having me here. You bet, you bet, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. You've got a partnership now, you, you've synced up yes. uh, with Splunk, so tell us a little bit about that. Uh, and then we'll get into the customer value after that. But first off, what's the partnership all about? Sure, so we've actually been partners for about five years, really helping to solve some customer needs. We've got about uh, several thousand customers who are actually using both products together to solve the needs I'll talk about in a minute. Um, the partnership is really key to us. We've invested a ton of time, money, effort into it. We have executive level sponsorship all the way down to sales. So, in the field, we have reps working together to really position the solution to customers, both us and Splunk, and then how we tie together. Uh, we're the number one downloaded app for Splunk, by far, that's a third party, so they have a couple that are uh, more downloaded than us, but for third party, we've done that. We develop it all in-house ourselves. So, uh, for customers out there who think the app's great, I'll talk about the new version coming, I'd love any feedback on what should we do next. What are the next things we should do in the app? Because we're really developing this and making this investment for customers to get the value out of it. Mm -hmm. What about the business update for Palo Alto Networks? I mean, can, can you give us the sort of quick rundown on what's going on with, in your world? Sure. <laughs> I think most people know Palo Alto Networks has done pretty well. We just finished our FY17, finished with about uh, 42 and a half thousand customers. Uh, revenue was, I think, 1.8 billion approximately. We're still a very high growth custo uh, com company and uh, been growing the product set pretty well. From products, next-gen firewall, all the attached subscriptions, and then we've got things like the endpoint traps now that's really doing well in the market where customers need help on preventing exploits on the endpoint. So it's that's the, been a growing market for it's us. It's the hottest space in the data center right now and, and everybody wants to partner with you guys. Yeah. Obviously Splunk, you know, we go to all the big shows and, and they're touting their partnerships with, with Palo Alto. What do you attribute uh, that sort of success to? Uh, customers, truly. Mm. So I run the partnerships for the company. If we do not have a customer who will be invested in the integration and the partnership, we don't do it. So the number one thing we ask when somebody says, I want to partner with you is, who's the customer, what's the use case, and why, right? And then if the, we can get good answers to that, then we go down the path of a partnership. And even then though, we're still pretty selective. We've got 150 partners today that are technology partnerships, mm -hmm. but we've got a limited number, Splunk's a big one, that we really invest heavily in, far more than the others, far more than just an API integration the stuff of getting out to customers in the field, the development of apps and integration, those things. So, so talk about, you know, we, we laugh about Barney deals sometimes, you know. I love you, you love me, <laughs> let's do a press release. So what differentiates that sort of Splunk level of, par yeah. of partnership? Is it engineering resources? Is it you know, deeper yeah. go to market? Maybe talk about that a little um, bit. Yeah, I hate Barney partnerships yeah. completely. <laughs> <laughs> if I do those, I'd fire me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> truthfully. Um, I think the value that we've done with Splunk that we've really drawn out is we've built this app, right? So BD has a team of developers on our team that writes the app for Splunk. And we have spent four years developing this app. We were the first company to do adaptive response before it was called adaptive response. So you see something in Splunk, you can actually take action back to a firewall to actually uh, block something, quarantine something, anything like that. Um, the app today is really focused on um, our products, right? Threat, uh, endpoint, uh, wildfire, things like that, right? So it's very product focused. 
we're actually putting a lot of time and effort into a brand new app that we're developing, that we're showing off now, that will ship in about a month and a half, that's really focused on adversaries and incidents. So we have something called the adversary scorecard, where it'll show you, this is what's actually happening on my network, how far is this threat penetrating my network and my endpoints? Is it being stopped? When's it being stopped? Um, and then we've got an incident flow too that shows that, um, that level down to traps prevented this and here's how it prevented it. And then if we go back to the adversary scorecard, it ties into what part of the kill chain did we actually stop it at? So for a CISO, when you come in and you say there's a new outbreak, there's a new worm, uh, there's a new threat that's happening, how do I know that I'm protected? Well, Splunk gives you great access to that data. What we've done is an app on top of it that's a single click. A SOC guy can say, here's where we're at. Here's where we've blocked it. Yeah, I, I guess I've I'm, I'm, um, been talking to a lot of folks here the last two days, and, yeah. and uh, we've got a, a vendor right over here. We're talking, they have a little scorecard up, and they tell you about how certain intrusions are detected at certain intervals, 190 days to 300 some odd days. Yeah. And then I hear talk about a scorecard yeah. that tells you, hey, you've got this risk uh, threat and this is what's happened. I mean, so I'm, I guess I'm having a hard time squaring all that up yeah. with, it sounds like a real time in, in so, examination, yeah, so but it's really not because we're talking about maybe half a year or longer in some cases before uh, a threat is detected. Yeah, so as a company, we've really focused on prevention. Prevent as much as you can. So we have a product called Wildfire where we have tens of thousands of customers who actually share data with us, files and other things, files, URLs, other things. And what we do is we run those through sandboxing, uh, dynamic analysis, static analysis, all sorts of stuff to identify if it's malicious. And if it's malicious, we don't just start blocking that file, we also send down to the firewall all the things that it does. Does it connect to another website to download a different payload? Does it connect to a CNC site, command and control site? What's that? malware actually doing. And we send that down to the customer, but we also send it to all of our customers. So it may hit a target, right? The zero day hit one customer, but then we start really, how do we prevent this along the way, both in the network and at the endpoint? And so, yeah, there are a lot of people that talk about breaches long term, all that. What we're trying to make sure is we're preventing as much as we can and letting the SOC guys really focus on the things that they need to. You know, a simple piece of malware, they shouldn't be having to look at that. That should be automatically stopped, prevented, but that advanced attack, they need to focus on that and what are they doing about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the payloads have really evolved in the last decade. I mean, you mentioned zero day. We didn't even think about that. We didn't even know what it was you know, in the early 2000s. Yeah. So I wonder if you could talk about how your business has evolved as the sophistication of the attackers has evolved from hacktivist to you know, uh, 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 organized crime, the nation state. Yeah. yeah, so it has evolved a lot, and when you think about the company, um, you know, 42 and a half thousand customers says a lot. We've been able to grow that out. When you talk about a product, something like Wildfire that does this payload analysis, when we launched a product, it was free. You'd get an update about every 24 hours, right? We moved it down to, I think it was four hours, then it was an hour. 20 minutes, and now it's about five minutes. So in about five minutes we do the, all that analysis and how do we stop it? So back to the question is, when you're talking about you know, guys that are just using malware and running it over and over, that's one thing. But when you're talking about sophisticated nation states, that's where you've got to get this, prevent it as quickly as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. All right, so if, if we're talking about uh, customer value, you've, you've, you've kind of touched on it a little bit, but ultimately, yeah. uh, you said you got some to deal with Splunk, some to deal with you, some are down dealing with both. Yeah. So, end of the day, what does that mean to me? I mean, that, that you're bringing this extra arsenal in, you know, how am I going to leverage that into my operations, and then what can I do with it better, I guess, down the road? Yeah, I think, I think it really comes down to that. How quickly can you react? How do you know what to react to? That's, I mean, it's as simple as that. I know it sounds super simple, but it is that. If I'm a SOC guy sitting in a SOC, looking at the threats that are happening on my network, what's happening on my endpoints, and being able to say, this one actually got through the firewall, it was a total zero day, we had never seen it before, but it landed at the endpoint, and it tried to run, and we prevented it there. Now you can go and take action down to that endpoint and say, let's get it off the endpoint, the firewall's going to be updated in a few minutes anyway, but let's go 
really focus on that. So it's, it's the focus of what do you need to worry about? Do you know what a zero day is? Well, well yeah, we, you, you've kind of, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's the movie, right? Can you explain? No, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's movie because of the, the uh, because, concept. Because of the idea. Zero day means no, there's been zero days of protection, but you, you can explain right. it better than I can. Yeah, well, zero day means it's right. a brand new attack. Yeah. Never seen before. Whether so be, unique uh, characteristics and traits and a new way to infiltrate and something that's totally off you know, that's from right. left field. And when you think about it, those are hard to create they take a lot of time and effort to go find the bugs in programs, right? So if it's something in a Microsoft or an Oracle, that's a lot of effort, right? To go find that new way to do a buffer overflow or a heap spray or whatever it is, that's a lot of work, that's a lot of money. And so one of the things we focused on is if we can prevent it faster, that money, that investment those people are making mm -hmm. is out the window. So. So we really, again, are going to focus on the high-end, high-fidelity stuff. So the, yeah. the, yep, yep. The, the documentary called Zero Days, but there was, I don't know, how many zero-day uh, uh, viruses inside of Stuxnet? Like, I don't know, four or five. Yeah. And you maybe used to see, the, the antivirus guys would tell you, we maybe see one or two a year. And there were four or five inside Loaded into of this, one, one invasion. Inside of this code. And, yep, yep, yep. And, and it's the threat from within. I mean, one of the threats, if I recall correctly, was Actually, they had to go in and steal some you know, chip at some Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturer, so they had to have a guy infiltrate, you know, who knows, with a mop or something, <laughs> and stick a, you know, a, <laughs> hit a break in, basically. And so yeah. these are, th when you see a, a payload like that, you yeah. know it's a nation state, not just some hacktivist, right? Or even organized crime yeah. doesn't necessarily have the resources for That's the right. most part, right? It's a big investment, yeah. it is. Zero days are big investments because you've got to figure it out. You may have to get hardware, you have to get the software. It's a lot of work to and find And they're worth out. a lot of money on the black market. Right? Sure. I mean, you can sell those and things. And so right? that's why if we make them unusable fairly quickly, it stops that investment. So and we were talking with, with Monty Mercer earlier, and he was yeah. talking about uh, and his comments this morning, keynotes about you could be successful defending, right? I mean, it's not, all bets are off, we're hopeless here, but it still sounds as if in your world there are these inherent frustrations because bad guys are really smart. And all of a sudden you've got a whole new way, a whole new world that you have to combat just when you thought you had enough prophylactic you know, uh, activity going on in one place, boom. Yeah. Here you are now. So can you successfully defend? Do you feel like you have the tools to be that, uh, that watch at the gate? I'd, I'd be a liar if I say you can prevent everything, right? That it's just not possible. But what you got to be able to prevent is everything that's known, and then take the unknown, make it known as quickly as possible, and start preventing that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the goal. You, if anybody out here is saying they prevent everything, it's just not true. It can't be true. Mm -hmm. But the faster you take that unknown and make it known and start preventing it, that's what you do. Well, and it's, it's never just one thing in this world, right? It's, and now there's much more emphasis being replaced on, uh, placed on response and predicting the probability of you know, the sense of severity and yeah. things of that nature. So it really is an ecosystem, right? Which it is, is kind of that's back what I to, do. To what you do. Yeah. Right? So how do you see this ecosystem evolving? What are your objectives? Yeah, I think that uh, from my standpoint, we'll continue to build out new partnerships for customers. Uh, we really focus on those ones that are important to customers. So we recently did a lot with authentication partners, right? Because that's another level. If people are getting those credentials and using them, then what are they doing with them, right? So we did some new stuff in the product um, with a number of partners where we look at the credentials and if they're leaving the network, going to an unknown site, that should never happen, right? These you, Your corporate credentials should never go to some unknown site. So that's a good example of how we build out new things for customers that weren't seen before with a partner. We don't do authentication, so we rely on partners to do that with us. And as we continue to talk about partnership and BD, we're going to continue to focus on those things that really solve that need for a customer. Well, I don't know how you guys sleep at night, uh, but I'm glad you do, and... Uh, um, no, they you know, don't. That's yeah. What do you mean? It I'm, is, I'm glad is, you don't. It's 24-7, <laughs> that's for sure. Yes. Terry, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. We appreciate, appreciate the time. It. Glad to have you on theCUBE. Okay. The Cube will continue live from Washington, D.C. We're at .conf 2017.